Fresnel is an inherent property of many naturally occurring materials like glass, water, and some types of fabric and paint. In this video, I'm gonna explain how the Fresnel node works and how we can use it in our materials. So let's do it. Right click in the material graph and search for Fresnel. Some call it Fresnel, but it's pronounced Fresnel. There's a Fresnel material expression under utility and the material function under vector ops. This is the one we're gonna use in this tutorial. The Fresnel function is a highly customizable version of Fresnel that provides control over several different aspects of the Fresnel effect. Make sure to use it only if the Fresnel material expression doesn't give you the results you're looking for. Incorrect settings could lead to artifacts and errors in how the Fresnel effect is rendered. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into the math. It's hard and I don't fully understand it. To put it in easier terms, Fresnel is the term used to describe how the light you see reflects at different intensities based on the angle of view. For example, in this image, when the surface normal of the sphere points directly at the camera, a value of zero is output, meaning there should be no Fresnel effect happening. And when the surface normal is perpendicular to the camera, a value of 1 is output, meaning the full effect of the Fresnel should be taking place. The result is then clamped to 0 and 1, so you don't have any negative color in the center. Let's connect it to the base color to see how it works. As you can see, the middle of the sphere becomes dark gray, there's a smooth fall off, then it becomes white. And if I rotate around the sphere, it stays the same. In the middle of the sphere, there is no Fresnel effect. This is because we are looking directly at the surface normal. Toward the edges of the sphere, the surface normals are increasingly perpendicular to our eyes and the Fresnel effect becomes more and more visible. It has three inputs and one output. Exponent in controls the falloff of the effect. Its default value is 5. If I set it to 1, the falloff will be smoother, and as I increase it, the effect will be pushed closer and closer to the edges of the sphere. If I set it to a higher value like 10, the effect will be limited to the edges. Base reflect fractioning specifies the fraction of a specular reflection when the surface is viewed from straight on. The default value is 0.04. If I set it to 1, the Fresnel effect disables as it becomes all white. And as I decrease it, it slowly becomes gray and then turns to black. Negative values are ok to use too. I'll show you how the normal input works later in the video. Right click and promote these two parameters. Apply and save. From quickly add to the project, add these shapes to the level. I'll also add these mannequins. Assign this material to all of them. Now we can go around them and see how the Fresnel effect works. Before moving on to the next section, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new Unreal Engine tutorials I'm planning to put here. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. You'll be the first to know when there's new free assets and tutorials. The links are in the description below. Fresnel is calculated based on the surface normal of a face, so we can use a normal map to influence the way the Fresnel effect is distributed across the material. As I mentioned before, 
The Fresnel node works by checking whether or not the surface normal is perpendicular to the camera. On a smooth sphere, this means the Fresnel effect only occurs at the edges. However, when a normal map is introduced, the surface normals are modified. This means the Fresnel effect can highlight or emphasize details that would not be visible if the surface normals were smooth. The link to this page on the Unreal Engine documentation is in the description below. Right now, the Fresnel effect is only visible at the edges of the sphere. I'll add these normal maps from the starter content to the material. Now if I connect one of the textures to the normal input here, it changes the surface normals of the mesh. The Fresnel effect is now visible along the contours defined in the normal map. This is how different normal maps affect the Fresnel effect in different ways. We can even add a flatten normal function here after the texture to control the intensity of the normal texture. Connect them like this. Right click here and select promote to parameter. By default it's set to 0 and it won't affect the normal map. And if it is set to 1, the normal map will become completely flat. Change it to other values to see how it works. We can also pass a normal map into the normal input on the Fresnel node. This is particularly useful if we want the normals of the Fresnel effect to be different from the normals of the underlying material. We must first transform the normal map from tangent space to world space. So drag out of here and search for transform vector. Add this node. By default, it transforms tangent space to world space which is what we want. If I use the same normal map, it won't make a difference. But if I connect a different normal map, for example this hex texture from the starter content, it will make a difference. I'll add a texture coordinate and a divide node before it. Connect them like this. Now I can change the size of the texture with this value. Let's set it to 0.2. Copy these nodes and connect them to all these textures. I'll set this one to 0.5. Now it's like there's a transparent layer on top of the material. In the next video, I'm going to use the Fresnel node to create these materials. Make sure to watch it. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's been helpful. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new tutorials I'm planning to put here. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. The links are in the description below. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Now, with all of that being said, I'll see you in the next one.